feel welcome to ask them and they will answer however they see fit. Okay. So while I, <laughs> they're tickling me. <laughs> while I invite them in, Feel welcome to um, open your root chakra wide and open your crown chakra. Invite any beings that connect with you through the highest frequency of love to flow their energy in through your receptive crown and fill your being. And then flow into earth or radiate from your body. And you may find some of your non-physical friends or your past lives or your soul, your guardian angel, your personal librarian may appear here for you. We are here. We wish you would speak with the conduit about the benefits of releasing her hair, perhaps shaving her head. It would be more comfortable for us, but we are here despite the annoyance. She speaks of arrogance and vanity, yet she has this, so she does not completely practice what we preach and teach to her. Blessings, blessings, we are here and we are very pleased to speak with you on this glorious day. We hope you are each well. We look forward to answering your questions or conversing as a camaraderie chat. Hmm. Of course, these are alarming times upon your planet. We do say to you, do not worry, these times will pass and your planet will continue as it always has and as it, well, not always, of course, but as it has and as it will. Your planet is made of strong stuff. It is not the planet that suffers, merely the life forms upon it. There are many who are worried what will happen with me and the... Oh, we believe our friend maybe has unmuted. She has a question. Yes, our dear. Was there a question there for us? No, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with my audio. Mm. My apologies. Thank you. Indeed, we are compassionate for your situation. It must be frustrating for you. I do have a question, dear librarians. Yes, yes. Yes. You speak of, of arrogance, but I believe that sometimes arrogance keeps you on the safe, uh, on your path, not safe, but on your path. For example, if, if you're a youngster that uh, 
there are kids in school that want to party all the time and you say, no, I'm better than that, then it keeps you from going down a path that might, may not be beneficial to you. So that's, that's one instance where arrogance may be good, but also um, in regards to the world situation, which is what I think most of us want to hear about. Yes, the planet will be safe, and, but the flora, the fauna, the people, <laughs> That's that's uh, what we really are concerned about. You know, the many people dying um, en masse, you know, and, and we hear your messages and sometimes they're encouraging, sometimes they're a little scary. Indeed, yes, yes, you are existing in terrifying times. But we, in response to your first statement, we do not believe the youth in your anecdote is arrogant, but rather self-aware. Self-aware enough to say, I value my being, both present and future. I will not perform a task that is beneath my state of value. There is a difference between arrogance and self-belief or arrogance and bravado, for you may say, I do not think I am good enough, but I will fake it and go forward to see what happens. For this self-bravado is merely a way of coaxing one to take an action that one wishes to take when one does not have the self-esteem to motivate on natural. Do understand arrogance as we term it is a disconnection. You think you are too good for the beauty that exists around you. An arrogant person is the one who cuts first in line for no one else who has been standing in line is as good as they are. It is a very selfish, self-serving attribute to feel that you do not need to help anyone and you do not need help from anyone. This is different from one who has goals, aspirations, or a sense of self. Now, for your second comment, indeed, there is much unnecessary death and suffering on your planet. You have heard the joke a man or woman goes to the doctor and says, it hurts every time I hit my hand with a hammer. And the doctor says, stop hitting your hand with the hammer. This is of course a terrible joke. However, it is indicative of what is happening in your planet as we speak for the very concerns that you each have are situations of human creation and can be resolved with human alterations of your actions. The frustration is that each of you cannot impact what those who have taken responsibility for the planet, your global leaders, you cannot affect them. You sitting here, it is unlikely that you can make the Putin stop his unnecessary genocide and destruction. It is unlikely that you can make the Biden go forward with some of his promises for he feels tied up under the controls of the other politicians who are stopping him. Each sees what must be done 
and yet is in the frustration of not being able to affect the change. This is an excellent question you asked for. We do wish to discuss this. There is much happening on your planet and you may think of it in layers of realities that are all weighing upon your shoulders. There are things in your life you may affect and there are things in your life that affect you but you have no effect upon and there are things in your life that do not directly affect you but you fear in the future they will or you fear because they are harming others and it is difficult for you so we say this when each of you were born, you were born through a state of pure love, not in this life. Your soul's birth was born in a state of pure love. Your soul originated as a being of pure love. You have had many incarnations of life. And each incarnation of life has explored many lessons and has traveled many paths. Each of these experiences, when put together, brings more volume to this being, this eternal being of pure love that you are. the difficulty you have at this time is you have had many many lives and much experience for certainly you would not be here if you were otherwise those who are in fresh young life have no interest in what we have to say so you are an ancient and wise soul with much experience and absolute love because of this, you are already, all, you are, hmm, words, words, hmm. because of this, you are a very empathic, empathetic person with great capabilities, yet you have, and great sight, great understanding, yet of course, for you or in your life cycle, you have cut yourself off from the wealth of knowledge and experience that has remained with your soul. So you come to this life, you have your life path, you have your karmic lessons, and you have your great awareness, but no knowledge of what to do with any of this as you go forward with your life path and you learn your karmic lessons, it is most common for humans such as yourselves to learn perhaps part of the life lesson, then move on. For to be in the throes of a life lesson is to be in the throes of great difficulty. It is rare that a life lesson is comfortable and relaxing. They are often very uncomfortable, even painful. So most humans repress these emotions rather than gaining all the skills and knowledge. You go forward with life with many incomplete karmic lessons. These karmic lessons put a shroud upon you. They allow you to be easily triggered for they are raw wounds within your heart and your being, your soul, your essence. When you reach a time on the planet where there is great calamity and destruction, you wish to offer help, but you perhaps feel oppressed 
you perhaps feel incompetent to make a change. You perhaps feel overwhelmed by what is occurring and perhaps you even abuse yourself for feeling so overwhelmed. One reason for this is these unresolved karmic lessons that are lying pharaoh within you become awakened by these toxic external situations. They are triggers. So we say to you, we hope you are, we are articulate, your words for your language are cumbersome. We say to you, when you have an emotional response to what is occurring, and this emotional response is one that is demoralizing for self, do not follow that flow of energy. Instead, stop and look within what is occurring within you. For you may find that the emotions that are aroused are connected to a karmic lesson that it has not been completed. It may be a karmic lesson that is old from your youth even. It is not necessary to dive back in and relive traumas of the past. For you have learned many lessons in your life and have greater capabilities than you would have at that time. But you may find if hmm, war, disease, famine, climate, finances, whichever issue, if it hits you, communicate with where the hit is and follow that line. Why is this my emotional response? Understand not everyone would have this response. Every person has a unique response. Some people have a response that motivates action. Others have a response that motivates this or this or that. And some have a response that motivates overwhelming, to feel overwhelmed or demoralized. Look within yourself. Say, what is this triggering? you may find you have unresolved karmic lessons within you that just need to be acknowledged and released from you. Acknowledge them. Yes, 20 years ago, eight years ago, 50 years ago, three years ago, something occurred that I repressed or walked away from, but now I am more powerful and we are facing great things there. It is time for me to release this, for I have learned this lesson and I no longer need to carry the, the concealed pain. With this, Look again at the catastrophe and see how it affects you. For these karmic lessons must be released for you to go forward with your life. You'll find there are two types of karmic lessons in your life. The first are the karmic lessons you planned in your life. And the second are the karmic lessons that just occurred unplanned. Either way, the only thing to do is to learn from them and release them so that you may go on with life. You will find as you go on with life, if the lessons are resolved, you feel more peaceful, possibly even more joyous. So this is an imperative if you are to face these global catastrophes 
for no catastrophe may be seen for what it is if you are highly triggered within. Release, 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 and learn, go forward. Now, there is that lesson that is an imperative, it seems, you may say, but this is so selfish. The world is suffering and I must introvert and release my karmic lessons. We have all, but yes, yes, indeed, for you do a house cleaning, which allows you to become more receptive to connect with those who can help you with energetic healing to help you with seeing the shining path of the best choices to make assistance to your planet. You must heal and cleanse and release so that you may go forward a shining light flowing with good energies and receiving epiphanies, receiving enlightenment, receiving grand advice on how you may be of help to your planet, be it small details to global impact. Each depends upon the moment and your soul contracts for this time in the planet. If you have soul contracted that you will have effects on a small local scale, then do not berate yourself that you are not affecting planet-wide. And if you are here to affect planet-wide, do not hold yourself back saying, who am I to think such a thing? You made a soul contract. And you are no greater or lesser than anyone, for you are all beings of divine love who are expressing as a life for these few mortal years being you return to your state of divine love. Hmm. Now for what is happening on the planet now, yes, it is most distressing, most distressing. There is becoming more water, less land, more heat, many animals and many forests and many lands and islands will have great suffering. Many people and animals will have great suffering until humanity stops the harm that is occurring. Every time we have excitement and hope, this will be the trigger that will allow all humanity to heal in love as a collective. Every time it falls apart and there's much fighting, not every time, for we tell you, it does happen does happen. The more of you who take part in the healing, the more the healing will spread. We tell you this. For your planet, the humans do stop the fighting. The humans do stop the destruction. And your planet does evolve. We tell you this. Greetings. Um, my question today is, um, I understand that by releasing, um, it's, it's almost like the subject and the object of consciousness becoming one, right? Because we are all becoming one because, and in order to do that, we all have to release all this debris. So in order for the collective humanity to join hands and be in total agreement, it seems that this cleansing has to happen at all levels. Yeah. So, yes, however, it does not have to happen at all levels for humanity to come together. You may okay. be a flawed person and still open to divine energy. These must 
these may happen on separate paths simultaneously. So what is the threshold? I mean, you're saying you don't have to be cleansing all these debris and still be a divine person. We are saying when the catastrophes upon your planet come to your awareness, if they are stopping you, depressing you, making you inactive, then you must look within to release, to heal, to realize I have learned this lesson. I do not need to carry this wound with me any further. I see. I see. However, so, you do not need to wait to be a divine Buddha in order to be part of the healing. We tell you our beloved conduit is tremendously flawed. She has many issues. Sometimes she is a mess. She no. makes many mistakes. She has thoughts that later she realizes they were terrible thoughts. But she also is a divine conduit. And for herself, she is in constant growth. But that has not, you do not need to be divine complete to receive. That would be arrogance. That would be arrogance to say, I am not worthy to connect with my own soul. I am not worthy to acknowledge I am an eternal being of love. I am not worthy to respond to the divine beings who are trying to help me. No, this would be arrogance. You may work on yourself and open, receive, and work with those who are here to help you simultaneously. Okay, I get that. I get that the um, at the context, uh, I have mistaken the context. Mm -hmm. However, my question was with regards to the humanity as a collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yes. As that. Um, so by your answer, I'm getting that it doesn't really matter. You could be of all levels of pure or impurity or whatever, whatever the, the, the struggle is, we can still come together as one. We can, you can. For if you have many Mm, levels, as you say, of humanity, you have the young, fresh lives who have not incarnated much, and you have those who could already be ascended masters, but they are sticking around to help your planet. You have those who are beings from other dimensions who are here in human form to help. So even among humans, forget all the other frequencies and and collectives that are here to help within their shape and harmonics. Just in the humans alone, you have a grand diversity. It is the hope that each being will find their way to be their best self for whom they are for this life, for that will help with the connection. But, what we tell you is the more those who choose to connect with divine do so, the greater energy empowerment you have to the grids, the mandalas of divine. And that helps to spread your frequency. So those who are a little more clueless to this as a concept still become awash. They'd say, I don't understand what's happening, but when I'm with this group, I feel so good and happy. Or when I listen to this person, I believe that good things are possible. You understand individuals may be potent and individuals connected either socially or with your meditations or through the mandalas 
may be empowering for the goodness of your planet. Look even to your beautiful beloved Ama, one tiny lady who has such an impact, not because she is powerful, of course she is, but because she connects with the power and she channels the divine essence to others and she connects on a three-dimensional physical grid of people along with the grand multi-dimensional grids of love and healing. She is a wonderful example of where humanity is capable of being. Yes, as you said last time, to become that bubble. In that effervescent, yes. Effervescent <laughs> bubble. Effervescent bubble. <laughs> what can we do within the next, I don't know, how long is this condition will last? This so-called, I mean, it's not the so-called, this war. And would there be anything detrimental that, Putin may decide to do? And what's going to happen to him? Well, you understand the Putin wishes to rule the entire world. He wishes to completely destroy the Ukraine country to rubble as punishment to the peoples of this country for believing they were free. He does not wish to rule the people. He wishes to genocide the entire culture. Then he wishes to spread and spread and spread. He has allies that wish to support him to rule the entire world. He will not succeed, of course. He is a fool for pursuing such efforts. Hmm. It is our hope that for your timeline, as humanity comes together to resolve this crisis, Humanity will also stay together to resolve many more crises. And this will have a beautiful effect of leading all of your planet on the path towards the future that we are speaking to you from, where your planet is so vibrant and healthy and filled with great caring and concern. So what can you do in your free time? Practice your skills. Practice your skills. For each of you is capable of great impact and great healing. If nothing else, practice putting blessings upon water and upon land. If nothing else, practice on creating grids to send love and healing to those you care about. You may send care packages, physical care packages to the peoples of your planet who need them. You may do your good deeds as you wish, sign your names to petitions, take actions as you wish. Not forced actions, but actions that you feel motivated to take. You may also contact those you love and remind them that you love them. All of these are of equal beneficial effect. But those of you who feel kindred with energetic work, we do implore you to practice your divine energetic work so that you may grow your efficacy. Thank you, dear teacher. 
This is our pleasure. Remember to do energetic healing on a glass of water is no different than doing energetic healing on an ocean. But it is difficult to heal an ocean if you have not practiced on a glass of water. You know, when you speak with your friends, hmm, no, no, we will have the conduit share this. We are telling her what to say, but we feel it is time for us to depart. So we will, we will allow the conduit to continue while we stay close. Before Thank we you. depart, this is our pleasure. Are there any immediate questions that only we can answer? Thank you and blessings to you. Blessings to each of you as well.